Well, God bless you. How you guys doing? This is your good friend, Pastor Eric here, all the way from Escondido, California. And I just wanted to uh, share a quick reading uh, as I have had some time to actually quarantine with my family. Yes, unfortunately, my family had contracted uh, the vid, uh, but I was the only one that came out negative. So I have had to isolate in our glory garage. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Everyone is well. Uh, everyone in my home only had mild symptoms. Uh, so everyone's doing good. And I've just taken this time to actually draw nearer to the Lord and just listen to him and allow him to uh, speak to me concerning my heart and just concerning uh, the areas of my heart that need to be uh, weaned even more uh, closer to him. Uh, this uh, scholarly uh, book, uh, Sanctifying uh, Interpretation, Vocation, Holiness, and Scripture by Dr. Chris E. Green. Uh, this is actually his second edition. Uh, he's wrote a first edition, but um, would encourage you to allow it to challenge your theology and to challenge uh, your point of view concerning the gospel in some areas. One of the areas that I saw that uh, was very well written and made some great points concerning judgment, uh, I wanted to kind of go over just uh, just a few pages here with you and to, uh, to break down in the theological aspect of how the Lord sees judgment and how he expects us to judge not only one another as within the body of Christ, but how we judge ourselves as well. And then that there are actually realms concerning judgment. And so page 91, uh, and it speaks about uh, holding court with God. Uh, it says, um, Human beings are created to share in God's judgments. We might even say that God saves us for judgment. When Paul says the saints judge the world, according to 1 Corinthians 6 and 2, he has in mind, I think, both Psalms 8, which in regards to a responsibility to mediate the divine beauty to all creation. And in the Psalms 82, if, it, if you have not had a chance to read Psalms 82, I would advise you to take time to thoroughly go back through Psalms 82 and you will see that there is a divine counsel, not E-L, but I-L in counsel, where the gods, lowercase, are in counsel with God as he as he discusses uh, uh, some of his plans and outlines concerning humanity and just concerning uh, what, what he would, his will to be invoked into the earth realm. And um, I believe that at times we forget that, as stated here, that God actually uh, wants us to join in with that judgment, which once again is talks about in 1 Corinthians 6 and 2, that Paul talks about that at the end of the age, we will actually judge angels. Amen. We will actually judge angels. And that is because we share in the inheritance and as heirs, as uh lowercase kings with the capital king jesus christ as we move through the millennial age as we move through life what we need to understand is that in order for us to fully walk in the imagery of christ it's going to require us at times uh to take the back seat actually it's going to require us to take the back the back seat more often than we would like to uh, because the Bible says that we uh, also are accountable to one another. And it speaks about this in Romans. Uh, Oliver Davis may, makes a, a great argument and he talks about that judgment in this sense names the spiritual moral vision through which we interpret life in all of its complexity, drawing it into a meaningful and if possible coherent but never totalizing narrative. A meaningful human life is one that is shaped by judgment, making what we believe about the world and how we act in the world 
consistent and converging. And so what he's saying here is that um, that how we act or how we portray ourselves, how we uh, give uh, the world around us a point of view, the point of view is going to come from the level in which your consciousness has been sanctified in Christ. And so based on your bias, based on your psyche, based on uh, your intuition, based on your self uh, awareness, based on uh, how you've come up, based on what's happened to you through the past. These are the lenses and the outlook outlooks that you will begin to view the world around you. And we see that uh, in the garden that God clearly gives Adam and Eve a choice that they're to, they can either stay on the narrow path uh, dwelling with God in the cool of the day of his presence or they would have a choice uh, to deviate from the narrow path and to take the broad road which would lead to good and evil which means that they would choose to obey another voice rather than the voice of God and we see that Adam and Eve uh, unfortunately take the bait and they decide to obey Satan and in that we begin to see the first uh, prophetic uh, suffering of Christ a uh, picture of Christ uh, notated in Genesis 3 and 15 it says that the the seed of Eve would bruise the head of Satan and so it is clear that based on that decision that Adam and Eve chose to make, they decided to go uh, down the road of curses, curses that would that would tend to uh, women uh, having to go through childbearing in pain and men having to toil in the earth in order to make a living. And uh, thank God that Christ became the second Adam to redeem humanity and broke the curse of us having to live in a poverty mindset. But now we are in a state of being renewed and in regards to not only becoming, but being uh, who Christ has called us to be. And so we have a choice now uh, to begin to practice day-to-day -day living of submitting ourselves to one another and submitting um, even our emotional responses. Uh, we, we have a choice to lay those, those emotions down and for the sake of peace, for the Bible says in Matthew 5, according to the Beatitudes, that blessed are the peacemakers. Ephesians also talks about that uh, Paul says, listen, uh, make every effort to live with one another in peace, which means be intentional, uh, make right judgments and moral decisions concerning how you dwell with one another. Basically, steward your judgments, steward the decisions that you choose to make. So in 1 Corinthians 4, 3 through 5, uh, Paul also makes an interesting statement concerning this he says but with me it is a very small thing that i should be judged by you or by it by any human court i do not even judge myself i am not aware of anything against myself but i am not thereby acquitted it is the lord who judges me therefore do not pronounce judgment before the time before the lord comes who will bring light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart then each one will receive commendation from God. And we see then that Paul holds a distinction between the kind of judgments we can and must make here and now and the kind of judgment the Lord gives in the end. Our interpretation, our judgments are penultimate and so provisional. God's judgment in Christ, final appearing is ultimate and final. What are we to learn from Paul's distinction in this? First, it means that we can and must in this life develop good judgment. Learning to interpret our experiences as faithfully as we can. 
After all, Jesus commands us to judge with good judgment. This is according to John 7 and 24. And we would not, and he would not, I'm sorry, he would not command it uh, if it were uh, simply impossible. So once again, we see that uh, the fact that Christ has weaved the culmination of his prophetic promises all throughout the word of God in Genesis and Revelation, we see that in these covenants, multiple covenants that are made and promises that are made uh, to man in, in order to uh, to get closer to man, we see that God goes above and beyond even in his covenantal agreements to that even when man misses the mark and falls, God is still faithful on his end to still bless and cover us because it is not by works that we've been saved, but it is by grace that we have been saved. Amen. And so we see that in those covenantal agreements based on litigations that were laid out those covenants man has a responsibility to meet at least some of those requirements and those would require our yieldedness and our obedience it's just as simple as that it's yieldedness and obedience it is if we're able to uh, lay down our will because when we accepted Christ, we were baptized into the new law, the new covenant. We were baptized with him, which means that our consciousness died. The old man, the old conscious died with Christ, but it was also resurrected into new life. The Bible says that we have the mind of Christ now. Amen. And so which means that our consciousness must be willing to be renewed daily. Romans 12, in the word of God, renewed daily in the fruit of the spirit in order that we may live a life that's pleasing unto God and that we may live a life uh, where the fruit of the spirit is actually bringing and introducing redemption to mankind. For it is not our job to judge outsiders, but it is our job to judge one another within the body of Christ and hold each other accountable according to the fruit of the, the spirit that we see in Galatians uh, uh, 5. Amen. And so, beloved, uh, I'm going to drop in a, a link below so that you can get a chance to check out uh, this this excerpt here uh, from Dr. Chris E. W. Green, and a uh, phenomenal uh, scholarly work here. He also quotes some other great scholars in this book. Uh, it's definitely something that you need to uh, bite and chew very slowly. But uh, I like to uh, uh, to challenge myself theologically, and I like to also make sure that I am stewarding um, my uh, interpretations and vocations concerning uh, uh, the scriptures. I do not necessarily consider myself a scholar uh, or a theologian, but I do believe that it is our responsibility and that God has provided resources in the earth realms for men and women of God who are called to lead and pastor for us to study, to show ourselves approved. A workman need not be ashamed of the gospel. That's what the word of God says. And so uh, the gospel is not for the lazy. The gospel is not for the slothful. It does require a time. It requires um, blood, sweat and tears in the spirit. It requires you. Uh, it requires time in prayer, it requires time in study, it requires time in, in, uh, in applying ourselves to to understand uh, the uh, not only uh, the Septuagint, uh, but the synoptic gospels as well so that we uh can can know not only uh what we believe in but to be able to defend the faith and to be able to present jesus christ historically factually and considering millennially amen we should be able to uh to weave in and out of scripture uh, with clarity, with precision, and with conviction. 
Amen. And love it. I hope and I pray that this has blessed you. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel for more updates and uh, for more teachings. But beloved, I love you so much. God bless you and shalom.